What's up, everybody? Marty Martin here. This is the Geek Nick Podcast. I am your host. And Sci-Fi Wire posted an article. It says, George Lucas defends Star Wars prequels. Says they were designed for 12-year-olds. I don't even know why people are still hating on the prequels. I don't mind the prequels. The only bad thing about the prequels was Jar Jar Binks and the dialogue in Attack of the Clones. That's pretty much it. And the oversaturation of CGI um, covering practical effects. Because it looks like there weren't really any practical effects involved in the movie when there were plenty of practical effects. They were just saturated with CGI. So those are the three biggest critiques I have regarding the prequel trilogy. Other than that, I don't mind it. I enjoy them. I really did. Red says it's not my top five favorite Star Wars movies. Um, Phantom Menace, I enjoyed it more than Attack of the Clones. I really do. And matter of fact, the prequels, had it not been for the prequels, I would not have my favorite Jedi of all time, Qui-Gon Jinn. Qui-Gon Jinn is my all-time favorite Jedi, hands down. I think he's the greatest. And I will explain why in another video, um, in another rant, actually. And explain why Qui-Gon is the best Jedi in the Star Wars universe. Now, I just, let's just get into this before I start critiquing uh, George Lucas's comments in the past. Okay, let, let's just read this. Okay, so it says, though fans have largely moved on to debating the new trilogy, it looks like George Lucas's unfortunate lot in life is to stand by and defend the, his three Star Wars prequel films, The Phantom Menace, 1999, Attack of the Clones, 2002, and Revenge of the Sith, 2005. As Phantom turns 20 years old this year, the celebrated filmmaker spoke with StarWars.com, which compiled a comprehensive oral history of Episode 1. When it came time to discuss the poor fan reception of these mo- of these movies, of these movie that that person should have added the S to the movies, uh, the poor fan reception of these movies, Lucas brought up an excellent point, that his intention was always to entertain kids and not snooty uh, connoisseurs. The films were designed for 12-year-olds. I said that right from the very, very beginning. And that very first interviews I did for New Hope. It's just that they were so popular with everyone that everybody forgot that, he said. Then when I came back to Phantom Menace, it was 20 years later. So if you were 10 years old when you saw New Hope, you would be 30 years old when you saw Phantom Menace. So you weren't a kid anymore. I think you were kind of embarrassed, and what you thought was really a fantastic movie for a 12-year-old wasn't that great for a grown-up. I think that was the main cause of the fall of episode 1, 2, and 3. Believe me, it took a beating. No, George. No. Okay? And this is the thing. Okay, I don't understand what George and what Disney think. They always say Star Wars is made for kids. It's made for kids. It's not. It's not. Maybe they intended it to make it for kids, but guess what? It's not. The majority of the people that watch these are adults. And the majority of the fans are above the age of, like, t- above the age of 13. You go to the movies. Whenever a new Star Wars movie comes out, do you see more kids? Do you see more, more grown ups? What do you see? You're going to see more grown ups. Because really. Star Wars is, it, it, it's, it's a very complex story, it has a very complex story arc, and, uh, and it has a legacy too, and majority of these people that are really committed to the franchise grew up watching it, because you have to remember, the 70s were not that long ago, the 80s were not that long ago, and certainly the 90s were not that long ago. Uh, us millennials and Generation X, we love Star Wars more than any other generation. Period. Alright? Because we grew up watching that. I grew up watching the prequels. Um, I saw them in theaters when they came out. Um, I grew up watching the originals on v- VHS. I remember. Star Wars and Jurassic Park and E.T. were the movies of my childhood. Big time. Big time. Big time. 
Star Wars was like the number one franchise for me growing up as a kid, next to Jurassic Park. Um, look at J.R.R. Tolkien. Okay, when he wrote um, the Hobbit and uh, Lord of the Rings, you know uh, these were well, these were uh, supposed to be children's novels, but J.R.R. Tolkien uh, he wrote them in a way that it was dark, very mature and very adult like, and he realized he said, "Hey, actually." This is actually for a more mature audience, even though it's intended for kids. This actually turns out to be more adult than I thought it would be. That's how it, how it is with Star Wars. The people that are more invested into the franchise are the older generations. People aged 18 and up today. The young generation... Like, the generation after the millennials. Those born 1997 and... Uh, between 1997 through 2000, okay, that's like the next generation of young adults that are committed to the Star Wars uh, franchise. The generation afterwards, they're not as invested in Star Wars as we are, okay, because other franchises came along came along the way that actually ended up um, competing with Star Wars. Because if you think about it, Star Wars from the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, there really weren't too many other franchises that it was competing with, especially 80, in the eight, 70s, 80s, and 90s. It wasn't until Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings came out, that's when Star, Star Wars had a strong competition. But with Lord of the Rings, it only lasted three films. So uh, it came out uh, 2001, 2002, 2003 with Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King in 2003. And by 2003, Star Wars, they already did uh, Attack of the Clones, which, which was episode two. So they had one more Star Wars movie to come out, which was in 2005, Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. So um, we were, they were still making movies uh, by the time Lord of the Rings had ended. Harry Potter. Harry Potter was the big one. The big one. For kids. Now, Harry Potter is more for kids than Star Wars is. Because I think Star Wars is very philosophical. It's very philosophical. Um, there's a lot of mythology. There's a lot of religious symbolism in them. They, I don't think they realize how well done the, the Star Wars storyline is. It's so good. It's amazing. Philosophy, spiritualism, and spirituality, religion, politics... All of that, you could take so much from a Star Wars movie more than you could take from a Harry Potter film. More than you could take from a definitely a Transformers movie. It 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 just is. It's more and also when you look at the Star Wars prequels, it is as a young kid, I Attack of the Clones was boring for me as a kid. And it is boring. I'd say it's the most boring Star Wars movie because really it's not so much of a Star Wars movie, it's it's a romance movie. Because really, two-thirds of the movie was about uh, Anakin and Padme, you know, being together, traveling from planet to planet, you know, just, just, just this big love affair, basically. It was a love movie. It was a love story. So, um, there's a lot of talks of politics, negotiations, um, talking about the Federation, and then, you know, treaties, all of that stuff. Peace pa packs and everything, all of that. So, um, these are stuff that young kids don't really understand. There's a lot that kids don't understand when they watch Star Wars. Now, the new, the sequel trilogy is so watered down. It's so it's too simplified that um, there's really there's no complex storytelling going on there. You know, it, it's a it's a complete movies based on uh, entertainment. And entertainment is basically something, there's nothing to take from it. The reason why Star Wars, the franchise, is so good is because it's both art and entertainment. It's something that you could be entertained by, but also you could take something out of it too. You could learn something from it. Um, that's why it, it's good. I think it's a perfect franchise compared to, to any uh, film franchise. Um, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, that's where it's at. That's where it's at for me.
I couldn't get into Harry Potter. I saw the first one. I hated it. I saw a little bit of the second one. I was bored. This was long. Okay? There are more Harry Potter movies than Star Wars movies. And I'm talking, I'm minus Solo, Rogue One, and all of that. And when I talk about Star Wars movies, I just mean six. I mean six. How many movies did does uh, Harry Potter have? Let me check. How many Harry Potter movies are out there? So again, if we want to be real, Star Wars, they have uh, six movies. Six movies. How many does Harry Potter have? Eight. Harry Potter has eight movies and two uh, spinoffs. So what? That's like ten movies. It's like ten movies. Now we're getting nine. So we ta So we. So we're getting episode nine. We had Solo and Rogue One, and then we had Clone Wars too. So that is uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's twelve movies. But again, I'm only talking about the OGs. The original trilogy, the prequel trilogy, not not the sequel trilogy. That that's trash. But uh, Rise of Skull Skywalker looks pretty cool. It does look pretty cool. I think it looks cooler than all the other ones. But back to this article right here. So, um, so this is what it says. He makes some fair points. The prequels are pure popcorn adventure flicks meant to stimulate the part of our brains that go nearly silent when a person reaches maturity. If you can turn off everything else for two hours and not nitpick the plot too much, you may end up feeling like a kid again, eyes wide and full of wonder at what can be achieved via the enigmatic term we refer to as magic movie. Movie magic. Criticism of the prequels range of variety from problems with the story, trade talks anyone, to character designs and execution. The most famous of the latter is Jar Jar Bings, the bumbling Gungan who proves to be valuable uh, to be a valuable ally to Obi-Wan Kenobi, played by Ewan McGregor, and Qui-Gon Jinn, played by Liam Neeson, ultimately becoming a major hero during the Battle of Naboo, and while Bings is a wholly CGI creation, it is easy, easy to forget that he was played by a flesh and blood human being, flesh flesh and blood human being, Ahmed Best, or is that his? I think that's how you pronounce it. An actor nearly driven to suicide over the intense hatred of the character. Wow, that is messed up. That is messed up. In Sci-Fi Wire's own oral history of Episode One, Best echoed Lucas's sentiments about the movies being geared toward children. Um, oh, Best, yeah, the guy. Based on Best's experiences, it was mainly just fully grown adults who prom uh, promulgated the anti-Jar Jar movement. Years ago, George told me that this was how it was going to be. He was like, the kids that grow up with Jar Jar, they're not even going to think about all the criticism that happened back then. He was very uh, uh, prescient. Everyone now who was a child then has so much endearment for Jar Jar. They just grew up with that and they look at their parents like, what are you talking about? People may age, people my age are the ones who were the Jar Jar haters, but the young people are the ones who gave it uh, the strength. The cosmic saga that Lucas kicked off more than four decades ago comes to a close on December 20th when episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker, opens in theaters everywhere. Okay, so, um,. This is what I got to say about this. When you make a Star Wars movie, adults are going to go. It, it, it's an adult magnet. It just is. The reason why, here's the thing that George Lucas needs to understand, okay? It would have made sense if the prequel trilogy was made for kids before the, the let's say, George Lucas never made an episode 4, an episode 5, or an episode 6. Let's just say he started with episode 1. A fresh, uh, whole brand new franchise. Let's say he just started the whole franchise with Phantom Menace, okay? Now, this looks like a movie, the way it was marketed, it would be for kids. It looks like a pure, fun, uh, magic movie. Looks fun. But, because it was an already established franchise, and it gained a lot of accolades, and people grew up... With the franchise, that they're more familiar with it. Young kids, it, 
the impact is not going to be as big as uh, on them as it's going to be for the adults that grew up watching the original one. So who were the ones that were more excited for Phantom Menace? The adults, the one that grew up watching the originals. And at the time, you know, even people in their teenage years, not so much little kids like 12 year olds or anything. Well, maybe at the time, yes, you know, because it was still new, but they were already familiar with the previous films. So that really affects the outlook from the viewer. So when they go see it, they're expecting a lot from it. They're going to expect a lot from it. Okay. So like, for example, uh, how long? So Return of Jedi came out in 1983. And Phantom Menace came out in um, 1999. Came, came out in 1999. So that's what, like 16 years later? 16 years later? So that's not that much uh, a big of a time gap. You know? Let's say if it was like, I don't know, maybe 30 years. 30 years. You know, kids kind of forgot about or people like, you know, the, it kind of fizzled out, the Star Wars franchise. So it's an introduction to a new generation. Okay, then, okay, that seems to be, it would be marketed for kids, of course. But because it wasn't that long ago before, um, since Return of the Jedi was released, that same generation was still present and still young enough to be excited to see um, Phantom Menace. Because you have to remember, um, there were people that started out watching Star Wars in the 80s when they were like five-year-olds. Four-year-olds, okay? So not necessarily those that saw A New Hope in their 20s back in 1977. You know, each generation. Usually, Star Wars is one of those movies that when you ask most people, uh, uh, when did they start watching Star Wars? They were kids. They were young kids. So they already developed a connection with the franchise. So, of course, they're going to expect a lot from it because the wonderment that they got from the previous movies they're going to expect it for it to be as good as this one for the Phantom Menace. That's how it was for Star Wars. I mean, bleh, Jurassic Park. The reason why a lot of people got disappointed regarding the Lost World Jurassic Park is because Jurassic Park has the had the wonderment. It was uh, beautiful. It was a mesmerizing, remarkable movie. And it wasn't really that deep of a story. Now, that movie was pure entertainment. It doesn't have a deep story or a deep plot, if you really think about it. That movie is just pure entertainment. I think that's the greatest movie that was made just for pure entertainment. I think it's the greatest one. But with The Lost World, the movie is was is darker. It's grittier. Um, uh, there's more violence in it. And people were pretty disappointed by it. Because they didn't get the same feel, the same feeling, the same wonderment that they got from Jurassic Park. So what do they do? They try to resurrect that um, wonderment and feeling again in Jurassic World. That didn't work. And they thought it would be good for the younger generation. No, it didn't have that that much big of an impact on the younger generation, like, you know, the 10-year-olds, the 11-year-olds of, of today. No. The reason why Jurassic Park made such a big impact is because... There was no movie... What made Jurassic Park amazing wasn't because they had dinosaurs. Because trust me, they had a lot of dinosaur movies in the past. All right, in, Including in the old days, even the silent film eras. Yes, I'm going to include those too. But... What made this movie stand out was the CGI. The special effects, the visual effects, all of that. That is what made the movie amazing. Not that because it had dinosaurs, but the dinosaurs looked so real. Even to this day, Jurassic Park 93 looks more realistic than Avatar. It looks more realistic than Alita Battle Angel or any other movie that's produced today. There is no other movie that surpasses Jurassic Park. Not one. Not a single one. That is just insane. Jurassic Park 1 and 2, Lost World, they all look like they just came out last week. It's just phenomenal. There was nothing like that before. It was the technology that was amazing. 
It wasn't the story. It wasn't the dinosaurs. It was the technology, not just also the visual effects and the special effects, but the animatronics, too. They looked so real. That is why people were disappointed with The Lost World, because they thought they were going to get the same feeling. No, the Jurassic Park uh, franchise, that's, that's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. That's it. If you want to get the Wonder Man and everything, you're only going to get it from Jurassic Park. After that, that's it. It's not going to be the same anymore because you can't revisit or experience the same wonderment again. You can. The only way you could re-experience that is if it never happened or if people forgot all about it. And the wonderment is you, you cannot get any of that in the Jurassic World movies because the CGI looks very poor compared to Jurassic Park and The Lost World. The, the T-Rex looks unbelievable. Uh, it's disgusting. I'm, I'm going to talk a lot about that in a rant, in a long rant video. It's probably going to be a series about why Jurassic World sucks and Jurassic Park 1 and The Lost World are masterpieces. Yes, The Lost World Jurassic Park is a masterpiece. I, I do not understand why people have a problem with it. The, I cut those people out of my life. Um, so, yeah, so with the... Star Wars has a better story. Jurassic Park has a better experience regarding uh, the visuals and the music, of course, too. And they're, they're, they're both done by the same composer, John Williams, greatest movie composer of all time, and greatest living composer as well. So, um, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. So people were already familiar with the Star Wars franchise by the time Phantom Menace came out. So there was that expectation. And I don't think George Lucas realizes that kids start out, they're introduced to, uh, to Star Wars at a very young age. Very young age. So even as kids, we're having expectations. We're having expectations. And then because we get so connected with the movie, so first of all, George Lucas needs to remember, everybody loved Phantom Menace when it came out. I don't think he realizes that. People loved it. It got accolades. People were saying... Uh, there were uh, videos of people actually say, oh, wow, this is the greatest um, movie of all time. You know what? Let's check this out. This is a huge deal for me. Uh, I was sick from school today. I want to be the guy coming out of the theater. To, it was great. You know, that's the, who I want to be. I thought there was going to be people here already. And it turned out there wasn't being. I was like, wow, I'm the first one. Well, it's Star Wars. It's like the, the original trilogy was just so phenomenal. People have been awaiting this for like 16 years. It's, it's grabbing history and maybe going with it and, and becoming part of it and giving a story to our, our children. It's going to be one of the, one of the many wonders of the world there are now eight wonders of the world one of them being this this movie we've been waiting since the last one came out for 16 years so this is a big thing i mean we've been waiting a long time it's it's time to get back into it it's the event of the whole thing i've been waiting 15 years since return of the jedi came out to see the prequel there's no way it's going to be a disappointment are there any of you that think this is going to be a lousy movie no! I feel like, I don't know, like it's, it's, it's exciting. It's, I'm going to be going to the first show of like Phantom Medicine. I don't know, that's all I can, that's all I can say. <laughs> Thanks. Ten loved it, seven liked it or thought it was okay, and two are no longer Star Wars fans. It's fantastic. Go see it as quick as you can. It was better than all. I think the lightsaber battles were the greatest. It was good, dude. It was really good. So worth it. So worth it. They're gonna love it. They're gonna go nuts. It was amazing. Couldn't get enough of it. I wanna see it again already. It was amazing. It was everything I thought it was gonna be and more. Non-stop. 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 I can't wait to see it in three hours. I'll be lining up straight into the lawn again. A lot of action, a lot of noise. It was cool. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, it was really good, must say. Yeah. I think it's gonna be the hugest thing. The hugest thing. It was intense. It was incredible. I loved it. It was awesome. We got tickets for the 9 a.m. show. We're going to stick around and see it again. I thought it was better than Return of the Jedi, personally, so they did a good job. I like the, uh, the special effects. I thought Lucas did a really good job. I think that little Anakin Skywalker, and everyone's going to say it, stole that movie. Thumbs up or thumbs down? 
um, God, I'd put my feet up if I could. It's fantastic. Good special effects, good story. Lives up to the originals. A, a very good movie. Uh, I believe the, the kids are going to love it. It is worth every minute of it. We've waited 16 years for this moment. An unbiased opinion, how was the film? Uh, I'd give it a definite thumbs up. It was like new because all the guys were new and you didn't really know how everything fit together before. So intense. I mean, I was my heart was beating. It's still beating now. And I just screamed, literally. What do you think, Cole? With the white? Yeah. And who's your favorite? Um, Darth Maul. Pandemonium. Everybody was out there just screaming, yelling. When Lucasfilm logo came up and 20th Century Fox came up, uh, that was the best. I, I like Darth Vader. Oh, you, oh okay. He's a little kid. Do you want to marry him? What? Do you want to marry him? <laughs> you don't want to marry him? It'll be a great movie 20 years from now. It'll be part of six great movies. Unless the next two really suck, but I don't think they will. <laughs> What'd you think of it? I think it was an excellent movie. I think Mr. Lucas did a fabulous job. Special effects were wonderful, and the storyline was wonderful. I'm going to probably come back and watch it a couple more times. Like that long-eared alien dude, I mean, he always messed up, but he ended up helping his army and stuff. I thought it was pretty good. Thumbs way down. You didn't like it? No, I, I think I deserve a public apology from George Lucas. You see? Everybody loved it when it came out. The same, those, look at all those kids, all those kids, they're my generation. And what happened, what happened, okay? We got older. When you get older, hindsight is twenty twenty. When you mature, you understand, when you watch other movies. This is what happens, okay, this is what happens, George Lucas. People don't, the reason why people hate The Phantom Menace it's not because they compare to other Star Wars movies, but they also compare to other movies, too, based on storytelling. And when you look at Phantom Menace, you begin to realize this is not that good of a movie. It really isn't. Because, like, who's the main character in it? Think about it. Who's the main character of the Star Wars Phantom Menace? I'll give you some time. Think about it. There is no main character. Okay? Qu Qui-Gon maybe gets the... He may get the, the... The role? But not really. There really, there really is not one central character in it. Now, the whole point of the storyline is the how Anakin came, uh, became Darth Vader. That's how it all started out. So that's the, the goal of the movie. The goal of the movie is to see that transition. To see how we got from here. How did this one cute, little, innocent, loving boy who got his heart broken after... Uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, cover your ears, cover your ears, if you haven't seen any of the uh, the movies, when his mother dies. You know, and how does he become this evil, stone-cold, dark villain? Cold-blooded person. Um, you know, the story is just not that good. It's just not that good. Now, I think it's, now... It's not that good, but it's better than the sequel trilogy. Better than the sequel trilogy. I'll tell you that much. I would much rather watch Phantom Menace a hundred times than watch The Last Jedi a fourth time. No way. Uh-uh. Definitely. Let's start up. Let's start that marathon, okay? I cannot do The Last Jedi a fourth time. I just can't. I can't. Uh, the second time I watched it, I watched it from the beginning, and the third time, I didn't really watch it all the way through. I was just skimming through it. I just fast-forward through some of the most ridiculous parts, which was like two-thirds of the movie. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's just not that good. I think George is a little too... Def I don't like directors when they're so defensive. And they're so sensitive. But George Lucas is not as bad as Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson, that man cannot take criticism. He cannot take criticism. He just can't. I mean, he even goes after YouTubers like Mike Zero. 
Mike Zero, if you guys don't know who he is, uh, he's a YouTuber and he talks a lot about Star Wars and he's a big Star Wars fan. And he was critiquing The Last Jedi. And what happened? Ryan Johnson, sensitive Ryan Johnson, attacked him on social media and was basically telling, calling him a hater, you know, like a man baby or whatever. And it's like, dude, grow up. Who's, who's the whiner here? Who's the man baby here? Why does a director go out of his way to talk to a normal fan, to an ordinary fan, and just trash them? You know, I mean, it's their opinion at the end of the day. It's their opinion. You just got to leave it alone. Like, gosh. Like, as a matter of fact, um, my all-time favorite critic, uh, Chris Stuckman, shout out to Chris Stuckman on YouTube, he actually did a very good observation of uh, a scene from uh, Star Wars, The Phantom Menace, that I didn't even realize until he pointed it out. And this is this was very, very key right here. I thought it was, like, I was like, wow, I didn't even realize it. So I came to the pod race sequence and I watched it through adult eyes. Now these are eyes that analyze movies. I like to analyze the way shots are cut together, the way sound is looped through a scene. I like to look at the lighting. I like to look at the way the camera moves. And as I watched this scene, I became aware of something that I've never noticed before. In fact, I've never heard anyone mention ever. Nearly every single shot in the pod race is from the right hand perspective of the pods. And I would say about 80% of the shots are panning from left to right, pan from left to right, 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 left to right. If you think I'm showing the same shot over and over again, I'm not. These are all different shots. For some reason, Lucas never thought to put the camera on the other side of the pods. So you don't get a well-rounded view of this race and it becomes very stale because you're constantly seeing the same movement happen, left to right left to right over and over again. I can't believe I never noticed this. I mean, yeah, there are shots like from straight on or from straight behind or a first person shot, but I think there are maybe one or two shots that are actually on the left hand side. It's nuts. I never noticed this before. The entire scene feels stale to me now and I'm sorry if I ruined it for anybody. I, I, I was just like, wow, I didn't even realize that. So I rewatched it again and man, this movie had so many problems. This movie had way too many problems, but at the end of the day, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I had a fun time watching it. Now, Phantom Menace, I would say it's not. it doesn't have the uh, deep story out of all the other ones. I, I'd say it's the most lighthearted one, and minus the sequel trilogy, let's forget about those. I'd say it's the one that's... I think George Lucas made that one for pure entertainment, and it was fun. Even though there's a lot, a lot of unnecessary scenes of dialogue that just talk about nothing but uh, negotiations and uh, peace treaties and all that stuff. It's just uh, taxes. They talk about taxes. Oh my gosh. Okay. How is he making a movie for kids, for 12 year olds, when they're talking about taxes and peace treaties and uh, the federation and all of that? How are kids supposed to understand that? How? Why do you make a movie for kids when you add in complex dialogue and discuss topics that only adults will understand? And that's what happens. You're adding adult uh, content into a children's movie. You know, really, because the kids, if you're making this really for kids, George, you wouldn't have any of the other things. You would not have the serious uh, underlayer of, the, uh, of a, have a serious topic. In it, okay? Because you remember, remember, George. Okay, they're twelve year olds. They're gonna enjoy it when they're young, but when they grow up, they're gonna see the flaws. So, George, the people that are bashing Phantom Menace are the ones that you said you made the movie for. They saw it when they were twelve. They saw it when they were ten. They saw it when they were five. They loved it. I love Phantom Menace. I loved it growing up. But it's my one of my uh, of the. Um, uh, the whole series, again, minus the sequel trilogy, it's the second least favorite uh, Star Wars movie next to Attack of the Clones. I hate Attack of the Clones. If Phantom Menace didn't have Qui-Gon Jinn in it, I, that would be the worst one. 
I would definitely say. But Qui Gon Jinn is the reason why I watch the Phantom Menace. Okay, a lot of people say I love the pod racing scene. That is so long. Pod racing is so long. As a kid, I didn't care because it was fun. But again, like what Chris Stuckman pointed out, it goes from left to right, left to right. And when now when I watch it, it hurts my head looking at it. It hurts my head. I get a headache watching that scene. Oh. So George is George is a big man, baby. Ryan Johnson's a big man, baby. I, I, I hate when directors have to constantly defend themselves and defend their work. You don't need to defend anything. People are going to have their opinions. Okay? George Lucas is the one that sold Star Wars to the devil. And he says, I sold it to white slavers. I mean, what, what, what did George Lucas say? What did George Lucas say? Okay, this idiot, he's all like being defensive, and then he, he he's the one that, oh my gosh, sold Dis, uh, Star Wars to white slavers, okay? Look, 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 look at this, look at this nonsense. This is how ridiculous it is. The stories and they said we want to make something for the fans so I said all I wanted to do was tell a story of what happened you know it started here and it went there and it's all about generations and it's about you know the issues of fathers and sons and grandfathers and it's a family soap opera I mean ultimately I mean space we call it space opera but it, people don't realize it's actually a soap opera yeah. and it's all about family problems and that kind of, it's not about spaceships so they decided they didn't want to use those stories. They decided they were going to go do their own thing. And so I decided, fine. But basically, I'm not going to try to. They weren't that keen to have me involved anyway. But at the same time, I said, I'm not going to. If I get in there, I'm just going to cause trouble. Because they're not going to do what I want them to do. So, and I don't have the control to do that anymore. And all I would do is muck everything up. So I said, OK, I will go my way. And I'll let them go their way. And it really does come down to. Uh, a simple rule of life, which is when you break up with somebody, the first rule is no phone calls. The second rule, you don't go over to their house and drive by to see what they're doing. The third one is you don't show up at their coffee shop or the things where you're going to run it. You just say, no, gone, history, I'm moving forward. Because every time you do, and you know, we all learn this from experience, every time you do something like that, you're opening the wound again. And it just makes it harder for you. You have to put it behind you, and it's a very, very, very hard thing to do. But you have to just cut it off and say, okay, end the ballgame. i got to move on. And everything in your body says, don't, you can't. And these are my kids. So All those Star Wars films. All the Star Wars films. They were your kids. Yeah, well, they are. My, you know, I, I loved them. I created them. Um, I'm very intimately involved in them, and obviously to and sell them And you sold off to, them. I sold them to the white slavers that take these things and and uh, <laughs> okay, but but I mean, but but having said all that and having talked to you for the last and and known you for a, a while and admired you, I mean, it must hurt you. Well, no, no, these I, are, it, 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 it's your family. No, it's the I, last story. But, but, it's but, your but, story. But it's end, you. But it's, I knew there's three more stories. And I knew that was going to probably take... You, you know, idiot! Right, it would take about 10 years. You, idiot! 70. I don't know... What this dude be. is... You know, every 10 years... I know, have no life. respect for him. And, I have uh, no respect so, for... Shut yeah. up now. I don't care. Okay? I have no respect for George Lucas. I have no respect for Paul McCartney. Because every time when something they created... You know, like Paul McCartney. Okay? He got... Oh, oh my goodness. Michael Jackson uh, bought a... Uh, Catalog, the Beatles catalog, something that me and John uh, made together. And get out of here. You hated John. You hated all your other bandmates and everything. Y'all broke up and everything. You did your own thing, okay? Now shut up with that, okay? And, you know, he, and he said, Michael came to me and uh, I told him, hey, you should get into publishing. You should get into publishing. Oh, really? Really? Oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's a good idea, Paul. I'm going to buy yours. And he's like, oh, you. <laughs> oh, you're a funny one. And he buys it. 
He buys the Beatles catalog. And Paul McCartney gets all mad and everything, you know. When Michael Jackson, he bought it. He bought it. He had more money than than what Paul McCartney had. Paul McCartney uh, wanted to get his hands on it. But Michael Jackson beat him by a few million dollars more. You know, it's business. That's called capitalism. Business, Paul, you know this. You're in the music industry. You know this. So stop complaining, stop crying and everything, okay? Stop bashing on Michael Jackson, you know, for, you know, the, that's the name of the game, man. That's the name of the game. That's how it works. That's how it works, okay? Hey, these people. And George Lucas making comments like, I don't want to hear George Lucas talk about Star Wars or make any comments about it or anything because like he said he sold it to the white slavers once you start doing that type of talk when you voluntarily uh sign the dotted line and everything you shut up okay stop whining go to your home up in uh northern california by skywalker ranch and live on a wine vineyard or whatever wherever you live and Live the rest of your life with uh, billions and billions of dollars and do whatever you want, okay? Just stop talking about it. Just stop, stop talking about it, okay? You said it's like breaking up with your girlfriend? Nah, man. You're the deadbeat dad that gave up on your kids and everything. You keep talking about your kids, blah, 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 blah. You deadbeat father and everything. Just leave, okay? Leave. Don't even talk about it. Don't even show up your face at Comic-Con, WonderCon, Star Wars Celebration, or any of the movie pre premieres, or yada, 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 whatever. Okay? We're done. We're done. Okay? So, George, the people that hate Star Wars Phantom Menace are the 12-year-olds that you made them for. They're just grown up now, okay? You know? We grew up. Maybe it's about time that you need to grow up. Maybe it's that time, George. Maybe that time has come. All right, everybody. That's it for this episode right here. Whew. I got to go relax. I got to get me a cold glass of water to chill out. Chill down. So, um, live long and prosper. May the force be with you.